views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Everybody, I'm the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. Welcome to Open BXRX, where we serve our community and we do it right here on BronxNet. Coming up on today's show, we'll speak to the president and CEO of the Public Health Solutions about different ways their organization is meeting the health needs of vulnerable families in New York City due to the coronavirus pandemic. Then we'll check out a local fitness studio and what their founder and CEO is doing to promote fitness in the Bronx. After that, my man Bobby C has the latest in the world of sports. And then we'll learn about what one organization is doing to provide legal counsel to underserved communities and ensuring justice for those in legal crisis. Stay tuned. All this and more is headed your way because we are now open. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, our next guest is the president and CEO of Public Health Solutions, and she joins us today to discuss their work bringing health equality to the community. We welcome Lisa David to the show. Lisa, welcome. Thank you so much. I am really thrilled to be here and have the opportunity to talk to people in the Bronx. Yeah, Lisa, first time on? First time on. But it's okay. You're a newbie, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, pleasure to meet you, and thanks for coming on. Uh, tell us about all the wonderful things that you are doing in our beautiful community. Well, let me tell you just a little bit about Public Health Solutions. Okay. Um, we are a New York City-based organization. We provide services in all five boroughs, predominantly to low-income and immigrant communities. Yes. And we provide services that really address all of the structural issues and social determinants of health. We provide access to food and nutrition. We do a lot of work in maternal health and early childhood development. We enroll people in health insurance. We provide reproductive and sexual health services. And we run the tobacco control work in New York City. So we're working with teens to um, advocate against uh, use of tobacco in all forms and um, sort of help advocate for a tobacco-free city. Yeah, tobacco control reform. Uh, talk about that. So this, this program is funded from the, a part at least of the proceeds that come from the tobacco settlement um, yeah. that happened years, decades ago. And it's interesting because New York City has been really a pioneer. Um, even New York City compared to New York State. Yeah. Um, and so the, there's been just a growing number of legislation that's been passed that restricts tobacco. It started within offices. It went to parks and public places. Um, what we're in that restricts tobacco. It started within offices. It went to parks and public places. Um, what we're now working on is um, trying to provide tobacco-free affordable housing um, and working with NYCHA in their going tobacco-free. We're really focused on menthol because um, menthol has been for decades targeted towards the Black community. Um, and so... Um, How does that work? What do you mean? Menthol, menthol is targeted toward the Black community? Is it a... It's a taste inside of the inside of the cotton end of the cigarette, right? And it, it bumps it down a little bit and gives it like a, a smoother taste. But what, it why makes is it, it directed toward the black community? Well, and they started 50 years ago with black athletes and black actors, and they hired black executives. They've been giving money to black churches and black organizations. Um, they've provided free cigarettes as a way to go out. Um, but menthol, you know, why menthol, menthol? So menthol, actually, because of that sort of 
refreshing sensitivity that you get. It's easier to inhale, it's less harsh, um, but it also does something physiologically in the body that makes you absorb more nicotine. Oh. So it's easier to start and harder to quit. So it's a little more, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's just so, as dangerous as smoking cigarette without the, the filter and, and the menthol, menthol. Sure, but that's, there aren't so many people that do that. So 87% of black smokers smoke menthol compared to 20 some low 20% of white people. And what are the repercussions? They're more addicted and smoke for longer and smoke more. Um, so it's one of many areas where we see disparities um, yeah. in, in health um, because of what goes on in sort of the larger landscape. Yeah. And, and your organization has been doing, uh, you know, working with our community for, for many years now. How long? Yes, we have. Um, we've been an organization for um, 62 years. Um, and what we do in the Bronx is we have on Tremont Avenue, 519 East Tremont, a uh, location where we enroll women and provide services for WIC, women, infants, and children. So yeah. we, if you're pregnant and through the age of your children being five, you get access to money for nutritious food and also extra money um, over the spring, summer, fall for going to farmer's markets, $20 a person. We also enroll people in health insurance and in food stamps, the SNAP program there. We have a smoke-free um, location that's been working with teens in Bronx high schools to help them train to be advocates against smoking. And we have um, a food and nutrition service um, prior to COVID, we were located in all three of the health and hospitals locations, Lincoln, Jacoby, North Central Bronx. Yeah. Um, and that's a comprehensive food service program where we will enroll you in anything that you're eligible for and need from getting you in touch with food, food banks, congregate meals, WIC, SNAP, um, home delivered meals and home medically tailored meals. And we don't sent. yes. You guys we don't prefer, we, we actually, everybody that works with us is required to follow up with you and make sure that you're able to come in for services and we know whether or not they got the services. And yeah. if there are other services needed, we can refer. So um, the, the, we're not on site yet. We're preparing to go back. The hospitals didn't want other people in during COVID. Yeah. But well, how, how, has COVID, how has the pandemic affected uh, your working capabilities in our community? So we, none of our services shut down, um, but the government extended flexibility to us and other community-based organizations to be able to provide services remotely. So we could enroll you in these programs. We could oh. enroll you in health insurance over the phone. Um, and, but we still have our site open. It's open with less staff. Half of oh. our staff are there. Um, so we have a combination of in-person services and remote services. And frankly, people have loved the remote services. Yeah. Um, there, it's much more convenient and particularly pregnant women and women with young children to slip everybody in is, <laughs> is a production and then you wait. Um, so we have not stopped providing any of our services. All of our service sites are open. Um, yeah. but it's less in person and more remote. And we're hoping to be able to retain that flexibility as we go into the fall and possibly, you Please, know, as soon as program. possible, let's get it going. Yeah. Can't wait to get yeah. back to some, some of some form of a uh, normalcy. Yeah. 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 But we love some of the things that you guys are doing in our community. We really, really appreciate you. And thank you. Did we miss anything? Well, I just want to let you know that, um, I know, it's been widely covered, but communities that have had structural issues for eternity um, have had been harder hit by COVID yeah. um, from a health perspective, but also from a social and economic perspective. So we've done a survey um, in the communities that we serve, not just the clients we serve, but the communities we serve. And in the Bronx, we did this in April, 81% um, of Bronx res respondents were worried about running out of money. 
and 11% were really panicked about being able to get access to food. And this hasn't gone away. Um, you know, we continue to see people. We have lots of new people, some, many of whom have never relied on government services before, um, yeah. that have lost their jobs or their, you know, employment situations changed, their housing situations changed, and they really need help. And in the face of that, we're looking at the government cutting the unemployment benefit, uh, the bonus of 1600 um, There are a lot of people who, I mean, the $1,200 was helpful, but it's gone. And there are a lot of people who weren't eligible for it. Um, we serve a lot of immigrant families, and they didn't get access to any $1,200. They don't get unemployment. Um, so the long-term impact of COVID is is substantial um, yeah. in creating even more stress on these families. So more um, people are going to be reaching out to your organization and other organizations yes. like yours for help. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've seen an increase. We've seen an increase in people looking for services. We've seen an increase in enrollment. And we're anticipating now, um, you know, as the, the loans that the government gave the Paycheck Protection Program yeah. sort of expire mid-October, we are also anticipating and have already seen in the news that they're going to be sort of increased layoffs and furloughs. So um, we're not over this crisis and it's going to endure. Wow. How can we find out more about what you're doing and how, how can others get involved in, in the program? So we have a website, health www.healthsolution.org. Yes. And it's very easy for people to find services. Again, we've seen a six-fold increase in people looking for services. Um, and um, you can get access, to, you know, find out all that we do and how you can get access to it. If you're interested in the Food Navigator program, that's a telephone number 1-800-410-0766. Um, and uh, if anybody's interested, I'd be delighted to hear from you. Uh, my email is ldavid at healthsolutions.org. Um, well, we always want help. We're trying to fight for these services to be funded and expanded as needed um, and to make sure that we're there to serve everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We love you and appreciate your services in our community and God bless you. Lisa David, President and CEO, Public Health Solutions. We appreciate you and thank you. God bless. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. All right. We'll take a break. I've got a whole lot more coming up next on Open. I'm the Doc Bob Lee. trying to get into some stretching and some exercising before the exercise. <laughs> hey, our next guest is the CEO and founder of LH Transformations. And today he's going to share his gym's plans for reopening along with the, some exercises that you can do from the comfort of your own home, like in this seat like this. So we welcome 
Larry Hamilton. I'm throwing my knees in the air. I'm trying I to wave you, man. I just don't care. <laughs> like a Ginger Rogers and a Fred Astaire. Let me hear you uh. say, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good morning. Thanks for having me All back right. and open. It's always a pleasure talking to you guys. And just right now, I get to share with you something I've been wanting to talk about for the past 165 days. I'm yeah. Not sure close. <laughs> so I just thanks for having me back. Now, you've been trying to open up, right? How, how are you making out with the pandemic and everything? You know, this has been one of those blessings in disguises. I have a mentor that says, don't ever make a crisis go to waste. We've got an opportunity to connect more with our members through virtual platforms like this. We've gotten a chance to do outdoor classes and just find a way to be creative to touch on. Yeah. So it's been a blessing in disguise. All right. So uh, I know the last time we spoke, you were on like a rooftop, a rooftop <laughs> garden type of thing, right? Yeah, I, was, I need some fresh air. That, that, that was the time of pain. We needed to just get out of the house. So I was out getting some fresh air. Right now, I'm actually working with one of my partners. We're building a virtual platform, and I'm collaborating with another gym owner. So I'm at his gym right now, working on platforms to help more people through this um, pandemic. Hey, what's your partner's name? Uh, I know him. I know him. No, know him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so what are we working on today? So today, um, I just yeah, want to share, <laughs> at the end, at the end, keep it on. I don't oh, want you to break any buttons. But right now, I before may we start, with you, I may not. before we start flexing, let's, let's do a little warm up. Let's, I think you have one of these. Here, here, let's grab this, let's warm it up. <laughs> you got it? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get one of those. You pulled this out in that last segment, I had to get mine. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just want to, I want to share my reopening plan with the Bronx community. I want to ensure that if you're coming to a gym, these are things to look forward to. You know, we got the great news last week that we can reopen. And I'm taking uh, my time with our members. I'm taking time with our community. Uh -huh. and first things first, it's, it's just being thankful that we can do this. Upon arrival, we're going to be taking people's temperature with a touch of the thermometer. We're going to be asking you questions on if you've been exposed to anyone with COVID or you've been sick. But the biggest thing about our gym, and you may see it through some pictures that you're going to show, is the spacing. Yeah. We're only going to allow three people for workout space. No sharing of equipment. It's going to be uh -huh. strength-based movements. And I, I stress that because we're not doing much cardio because we're wearing masks when we're working out. Right. Yeah. You're going to, wait a minute. You're going to work out with a mask on? We're How working out with a mask on. You have everything. <laughs> Man, we're gonna be working out with the mask on. Our coaches would have masks we're, on. We're gonna be breathing a lot of carbon in too. That's okay, but the kind of style of training we'll be doing, it's okay. Right. Now we're doing like hit format training. That might be an issue, but the style we're working with is strength-based movements. Those cardiovascular yeah. exercises that you want to get that sweat on could be, you know, on our virtual platform where you can take your mask off and come to your own home or outside. There you go. All right, yeah. you ready? What do we have? Show me what you're working so, with. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's hop into some ab exercises. And I get kind of nerdy when I talk abdominal or core exercises. These movements, they are essentially to prevent lower back pain. A lot of us have been working from home and you're on the computer, you're hunched over, you're in this position. So these moves are gonna open you up, but also get you that seven six pack you desire. So I'm just gonna change my angle, come down to the floor with me. If you're rocking out, let's do this team. Here's okay, what you here do. we go. First things first, you need a nice warm up. Let me see if I can take off my jacket and get ready for this. Drop down. There you go. Don't hurt yourself, Dad. Don't hurt yourself. So these cats and cows. I can't really get the jacket off first. That's fine. <laughs> and that's how you're going to get started. How about if this? If you're rocking out with me and you're trying these out, you're going to press your palms into the floor, work your breathing, and then come back down. Nice and easy. Yeah, nice and, and easy. And then we'll, you flip over and we're ready to go. Now, first things first, what I'd love to start off with are some glute bridges. Glute bridges are going to help activate your core, glutes, yeah. back region. You're going to pump up, come down. Drive tension into your heels, come down. I After you do a couple of these, I want you to set a timer on your own. We're going to do this for about 30 seconds, and then we're going to do my one of my favorites, reverse crunches. Put your palms yeah. on the floor, pull your knees to your belly button, come down light like a feather. Drive it in, drive it up. Yeah. One of my favorites, you combine both together with that bridge to crunch. Bridge to crunch, crunch to bridge. Great combination. Now, after we do those, here's what we're going to do. 
We're gonna find a high plank on our hands. Stack those hands over your shoulder blades. And we're gonna climb that mountain of success. Look at this. Bring that knee to your belly button. Try it back. Find yeah. stability. Yeah. Get it, Bob. Come on, Bob. Yeah. And then if you feel uncomfortable, you pick that pace up just like this. There you go. All now, right. Let's make it well rounded. The core wraps around your entire body. One of my favorite moves to do. Lean back, you're like you're in that recliner. We're gonna do some rushing twists. Now, if this feels comfortable for you, throw those feet in the air, find that balance, and twist it out. All right. There you go. Just like that. So those are some quick moves that you can do. Help out with that summer six pack, but most of all, prevent lower back pain. Look at that, that's real sweat happening. Yeah. You can cycle through those. What I would do for people watching, put set a timer, 30 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest, 15 yeah. seconds of rest, whatever works best for you, and repeat that cycle for about four rounds. You don't want me to stand up, do you? you, you you're I, right there. I think you're sweating. I think you're good. I, I don't know <laughs> if it'll work if I stand up, though. <laughs> well, yeah. I also wanted to, to share an opportunity with our Bronx community. Can I talk about that opportunity? Yeah, sure. Gonna, so for our reopening, I picture this as a grand reopening. We're going to give away three uh -oh. memberships for one year. So three people that have been maybe you're a fitness enthusiast, you're going through a financial struggle, you get the opportunity to work out here at LA Transformations for free. Now, if this yeah. interests you, you can reach out to me via email, LarryHamilton at LHTransformations.com. And we'll look for the person that's truly looking to inspire others while they're getting their work in for a free year membership. That sounds good, man. Yeah. Uh, now, you, you, you do a lot of this in the parks also, don't you? Or you started right. out in the parks? I started out in the parks. Right now, we are working out outdoors, outside of our facility in the Bronx and East Tremont and we're doing outdoor classes. We're taking a minimum of nine to 10 people, practicing the social distancing, and we're doing these great 30-minute workouts. We're doing about three workouts a day, and we are packed. Like last night, I worked with 30 people. It was great. Wow, yeah. And uh, how do people get, uh, more people get involved in what you're doing? Because I know a lot of people want to start, but they, you know, we've been quarantined. We've been eating, and our bellies are coming way out like this, and you have to take it slow to get back into it. How do we get back into it? You get back to it nice and slow. The first thing you do, you reach out to your boy, LH. I'll get you on a great plan uh, that you set up. We'll get you with a complimentary fitness class. And if you're oh. interested, we'll set you up with that entry for the sweepstakes. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. Um, you have a website? Yes. Feel free to check out our website. We're at www.lhtransformations.com. Come witness the before and after pictures. Check out our offerings. Uh, give us your information, enroll into the sweepstakes. We'll love to be part of your fitness journey. We're more than a fitness studio. We're an experience where you can literally transform yeah. your life through exercise. It's pretty awesome. And so you go to LA Fitness. LA Transformation. So Larry Hamilton Transformations. There you go. Larry, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us and uh, take us home with some sort of exercise. What should we do? All right, so if you want to stand up, this is my favorite movie here. I love the movie 300. I'm going to do a squat Spartan kick. Have you ever seen that movie? Uh, this is Sparta. Boom. You, you don't want me to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Let's take it out. Kick it off like this. Kick it off your week with a big yeah. kick like that. Total body moves. Total body moves. There you moves. go. I like that. Keep doing that, while I, <laughs> keep doing that while I bring in this package. Keep it going. Keep it going. Let's go. Let's so, go. You know, Murdera, she's up next with Rich Palancio and a performance artist, Dada Calls. They gathered to, to organize a wellness rally for social justice and the Black Lives Matter movement. Our Bronx Net cameras, they were on the scene. They had the opportunity to capture it all. They check out this event. Check it out right now. Beautiful. And then bring up those arms. Rotate that other knee outward. And then if you'd like, you can bring those palms up. Resistance looks like us taking care of ourselves and taking care of each other. That is resistance. In the Bronx, what it means to be radical is to look out for each other, to care for each other. Food justice, land justice, soil restoration. That's, that's our goal. That's what's happening and that's what will continue to happen. And exhale, swan dive forward. Beautiful. Considering everything that we've just come out of, it is a privilege for us to be here, to be outside. On top of the thighs and tabletop, come up halfway 
Find your gaze forward. Exhale, bring it on back down. My name is Dada Cause. I'm a community organizer. Um, I'm a performance artist. Exhale, arms out to the side. Go ahead, bring the arms out to the side. In this wellness rally, it's organized by Dos Flaco and Cristina Madera. Rotate the wrist, relax the shoulders. They invited me over to have a session, share with everyone, show the space, show the practice, the grounding, and, and being present with our environment. I, I like to say that if you can, if you can meditate in the Bronx, you can meditate anywhere. Relax the shoulders, always. That's what we do all day. We literally and figuratively carry it all on our shoulders. I organized this event today with Dos Flacos and Dada Cause. We wanted to do something for the community bring everyone together to talk about the movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, but also do something that can get us moving, actually physically, literally moving. We're not alone. And all of us, we have a voice together and collectively it's louder. Loudly. Quote by Asal Shakur. From your core. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Relax the shoulders and breathe. Especially in the Bronx, that we're very much a forgotten borough. So we're trying to be the um, a voice for hope because we're powerful in every way and we, people need to know that. Black lives matter. We're still here, rain or shine, no matter what, for as long as it takes, and this is something that's really important for all of us. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Black lives matter! 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 Good job! Good job! We're gonna hold! Let's go! Everyone is super strong! It's a mental game! This is how life be. Sometimes it's gonna be a storm, right? Sometimes it's not gonna be easy. Uh -huh. You gotta keep pushing. <laughs> this is real, this is this is real life right here. It's a test. Rain or shine, no matter what, Black Lives Matter every single day. And we will be here making noise for as long as it takes for a movement and a change to happen. The sun is coming out. The sun's coming out now, so it's it's beautiful timing, divine timing. And back to center. Beautiful.
It's that time again, sports fans, for another round of Gimme Five. We welcome in a good friend here to the show, Dennis Gorman, longtime New York City sports writer. Dennis, how's everything going? Good, Bob. How are you? Ah, life is good, man. I appreciate you coming on. I know I've uh, been kind of trying times for everyone right now. It's always great to catch up with you, talk some sports. This is a new segment here on Bronxnet. We can't really have the high fives that we used to, so we're kind of enjoying the uh, virtual fives these days. Most of the town right now is the New York Islanders. So are the Isles for real? Question one. I mean, they're a good team. Uh, and, you know, I but I, I don't think they're going to win the cup this year. I When you, when you look at the East, I think camp, for sure Tampa and Boston, you can make arguments for as being better. I think Philly is, is uh, they have a little more firepower in out West. You know, I, I can't see them beating either. Colorado or Dallas or, or or especially Vegas in a in a best of seven series. So, you know, I think I think they potentially get to the Eastern Conference Finals for the first time since 1993. But uh, I think that's probably as far as they go. But you know, that, that's that's still a, a, a that's still forward progress. Last year they got swept in the second round, and if they make the East Finals, you know, you, you, I don't think you can be unhappy with that season. Definitely impressive performance from them so far against Florida in the opening round and then this past round against Washington to knock them off. And they've looked sharp so far against the Flyers. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, I think you're probably going to get to this question in a second, but they, they've uh, they've completely bought into Barry Trotz's system and, Lou, and the way Lou Lamorello has his teams. They The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Yeah, and that actually does lead me to my next question here on Gimme Five. So, Dennis, right now, I would say Barry Trotz has got to be arguably one of the best in the NHL. But I was curious if you thought he is the best coach in the NHL right now. Not only do I think he, he's the best coach in the NHL, I think you can make a sh an argument that he's on the short list of the best coaches in North American professional team sports, along with Bill Belichick and Nick Nurse. If you look at the job he did – in Nashville, he comes in when as an expansion coach. He gets them to play hard. He kind of builds them into a pretty a, a solid playoff team. With Washington, he comes in. That was a team that people said would never win a cup with Ovechkin as captain. They they never would play defense. What do they do? They get the second round three times in his final year. They win a cup, and Ovechkin is now lauded as. A good captain, a guy that can, is responsible in the defensive zone. He comes to the island, but no John Tavares. They're going to be in the running to get Jack Hughes with the first overall pick. They have a hundred, a hundred plus point season. Get to the second round of the playoffs this year. They lose Robin Lehner. Oh, they're going to take a step back. They're potentially on the verge. They're, they're they're three woods away from making the sec uh, the Eastern Conference final. So. I, I don't know how you don't think he's one of the best coaches in the NHL and, and, and in team sports right now. College basketball really was the last time I got a chance to see in person, aside from some of our chats, either over the phone or virtually. I was curious, question three here for Gimme Five, what you thought the percentages are that we will see college basketball this year? I might have been like 50-50. I'm now kind of in the 35% range. Again, we don't have a vaccine. We don't have treatments. And now you start – hearing some of the talk about, well, maybe they can form bubbles. Well, let's just use the Big East as an example. You, the Big East isn't isn't just a Northeast Conference anymore. You have Butler, it's in Indiana. You have DePaul, a time member, that's in Chicago. Does Butler go into a bubble in Chicago? Do Butler and DePaul come to, to New York? And it's not just the players and the coaches. It's, it's tutors. It's uh, co assistant coaches. It's assistant managers. And again, it's it's they're college kids, you know. I think we're all old enough to acknowledge that college kids don't maybe always make the best decisions, and uh, I, I certainly didn't. And I, I just don't know how you can guarantee having, you know, maybe a hundred, well, well more than a hundred people in in hotels in New York, New Jersey, Philly, and guarantee that you know they'll be in their rooms or they'll be in the study hall without you know going out and uh seeing what life has to offer 
So it begs the question, since the NHL and the NBA have done a better job with the pandemic so far because of their bubbles, do you think the National Football League, the NFL, will be doomed this year because they don't have a bubble? Uh, yeah, I, I hate to be pessimistic, but I, I do think they're doomed. And you made the point about Major League Baseball. That's a sport that is very much it, – it, it's a socially distant sport. You know, maybe there's a, a guy slides into second, slides into third, or, well, there aren't places to play at home anymore. But there's usually about six feet of space between, you know, between players. You know, I, I don't know how you can guarantee six feet of space between an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman or a linebacker and a running back or defensive backs and wide receivers. And, you know, like NFL teams, they have, what, uh, 53 players on the team plus – all the assistant coaches and train training staff and team support staff. So you're looking about right right around the hundred person mark, give or take. So you have to keep those hundred people inside a bubble the practice week, then travel to to cities. And you start looking at city like Atlanta. Georgia has a high number of cases. Florida with the Buccaneers and Dolphins, high number of cases. Dallas and Houston, Texas number of cases how do you guarantee that those players won't contract uh COVID-19 going to those cities or or players in those cities how do you guarantee that they don't contract it because they went out after practice or after a game I, I just there just seems to be too many um too many negative variables for me to think this this goes off without a hitch you know, Dennis, too, I think it's interesting how the different organizations have played this out as well. I mean, it looks like no fans for the entire season. That was the announcement here in New York in the tri-state with the Jets and the Giants. But then you look at organizations like the Green Bay Packers, who, of course, are so linked to their fan base. They are trying their best. You know, they make the announcement, OK, first couple games, probably no fans. But we're going to try to have fans for the rest of the season. And then you look in Florida where their NFL team is probably going to be playing some games with minimal fans. So every different state kind of approaching this differently, but it's going to be difficult to navigate for the NFL. Exactly. And and the problem is, and you can kind of extrapolate this to how, uh, how America has handled this. There hasn't been a uh, strong leadership from the top. There hasn't been a, any kind of set plan. So, you know, like you said, uh, the Miami, Miami Dolphins and uh, University of Miami announced yesterday, I think it was yesterday, they announced that they will have some fans. Well, if you're, you know, if you're the New York Jets or the New York Giants or why is it okay for a state where cases are going through the roof to have fans, but we're in a state where we've kind of kept the, we've, we've kind of flattened the curve, but we can't have fans. And I, I think this falls on Roger Goodell. You need to, he needs to have been able to, have come up with a solid, solid plan saying, this is what we're going to do. They've kind of left it up to the individual states to make the decisions, and it, it, it hasn't worked. The final question here, number five, what do you miss the most about the press box experience, Dennis? Oh, man, what don't I miss? I, you know, I miss catching up with, uh, with you and, you know, people that I work with and people that I consider friends. Uh, I, I, I miss being physically being at a game and, watching and having the opportunity to write and report about something something happening every day that's new and different basically i miss being able to do my job you know it's and you know i'm i, I know i'm not alone in that i know a lot of people are missing the opportunity to do their jobs with the unemployment numbers being what they are but yeah i uh i'm not going to take this for granted i think you know i think that's all i think that's the biggest thing we've learned from this is is that it can be taken away uh, pretty easily. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and that's why, again, here at Bronx, we wanted to encourage all of the fans at home to try to do the right thing. You know, right now here in New York in the tri-state, it's all about wearing the masks, washing the hands, social distancing, and doing our best to stay healthy. So we really appreciate you taking the time here on Give Me Five. It was great to get your perspective on some things going on around the world of sports, Dennis. Always good to see you. Always good to talk to you too, Bob. Stay safe.
everybody. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee, and our next guest are the founder and Rock Legal. They have the Justice Clinic, and today they're going to join us to discuss their goal to build bridges between the community and the legal system. We welcome Karen McDowell and also uh, Magdalene Sosa and Sharon Fletcher. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank looking you. Looking good, looking good. Okay. Now, you're doing a lot. When did you start this? I, you know, and how did you name the program? Is you have The Rock working mm -hmm. with you? So we started, actually, it's been in the works for probably, I would say, about a couple of years. And we do have The Rock, The Rock of Our Salvation. That's where it that is derived from. <laughs> And uh, that is certainly, God is certainly our inspiration to uh, love our neighbors. And by loving them, we will be serving them and using our gifts and abilities uh, to assist them in legal concerns. And what was the inspiration we try and be, uh, behind the, uh, the Rock Clinic? The inspiration was really uh, God's commandment to love our neighbors. And we thought we'd put together our skills, our talents, our gifts, our abilities, uh, in the area of law to serve those that need assistance in yep. legal concerns. Each one of you guys are lawyers? I am an attorney, Sharon's an attorney, and Madalena is in finance, MBA. Uh, you got to keep the money right. <laughs> I will. So Sharon, Sharon, how did you get involved? Uh, I got involved, uh, Karen and I actually went to law school together. So we've known each other for quite some time. Uh -huh. while, while we were in law school, we found out that Karen and my dad attend the same church, Manhattan Bible Church. So my dad's been the link for all these years. He'll say, oh, I saw uh -huh. church. She says hi. And he would say back to Karen, I would say hi. And then it was actually January 12th, 2018, I received a text message from Karen. It was very uh -huh. early from my dad. <laughs> and she um, shared with me her vision of beginning the Rock Legal and Justice Clinic. Mm -hmm. And when um, I heard her passion for helping the community and realizing um, what, sh what her vision entailed, I said, you know what, I wanna be involved. So early on, my uh, family, we served as missionaries and uh, I, I, it was part of my DNA to want to be able to help people. And the thought that the Rock Legal and Justice Clinic could include the legal, my legal training to help others was perfect. So I, um, I was very excited to be involved. Wow, and that's a wonderful name, the Rock Legal Justice Clinic. And uh, mm -hmm. Magdalena, how did you get involved with all your money? <laughs> Karen and I uh, are members of the Manhattan Bible Church, which is located in the Inwood community. So she introduced uh -huh. me to Adam, and God put in my heart. I think that every Christian that part in their hearts to help people in need. Um, we have underserved people in areas such as special education, immigration, health care, and other issues. And I want to be part of that bridge that connects them to the right legal services. Yeah. And, and how do you guys? Go I'm ahead. sorry. Uh, um, my, I have a background that I think that is going to help. I'm a native Spanish speaker, and our community have a lot of Spanish speakers, so definitely I'm in. There you go. 107.5 <laughs> WBLS. <laughs> sí, señor. <laughs> um, so you're helping out our community, and there are a lot of people in need. During this pandemic, are a lot more people coming up to you at this time, seeking your help? Right. So right now, we uh, anticipate uh, a grand opening in the fall. Uh, we anticipated an earlier grand opening, but like all organizations, every person, not nationally, internationally, we're all kind of all put on hold because of COVID. Uh, so what we're doing right now is we have a special outreach where we put together what we call Law in a Bag, and we provided wow. uh, various resources in our specialty areas of law, uh, including special education, immigration, healthcare proxy, um, and... Landlord and tenant. Landlord and tenant law. <laughs> and so we connected uh, with one of our uh, partners, New York City Love Kitchen, 
And so with, along with when they distribute bags of food, they will also get these resources. So it goes directly to their door. So that's what we're engaged in now. And uh, hopefully um, by the fall, we will open up into uh, full service and we'll provide services in the particular areas. And we'll also be providing, uh, go into the community and provide uh, community forums, educational form forums for the community. I like that, Karen. Uh, law in a, in a go bag. Yes, law in a bag, yes. Law in a bag, I like that, yeah. You know, and you have access to it. That's great. So That's you guys, in, the outreach is there, but you, you, you didn't open up at a physical location yet, right? Brick and mortar. Uh, not yet, we're anticipating in the fall. So we were, uh, actually, it's a, I think that it worked out well because it rearranged everybody's mindset, including ours, in terms of how do you really reach people and it's no longer the traditional way of being in a building. Now you have yeah. to think how you get into the community, how do you get in their doors? And so it's a great opportunity to think about how you can really get service to people who need it. Yeah, I, I like I like what you're doing because people need to know whether the mm -hmm. what are the areas that you're dealing with? People are having problems with what? What are they coming to you with? Well, what do you Sharon? see the problem? Right. Say it we're, again? We're, we're looking at areas including landlord tenants, uh, immigration, special education, and healthcare proxy. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people can't pay their rent around this time too. So mm -hmm. I suspect a lot of people would be coming to you with that problem or situation. Uh, yes, actually, uh, pre COVID, I think that in terms of uh, housing court, uh, the majority of cases were eviction cases. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, would imagine that post COVID and during this period of time, uh, with the loss of income that it would that, that problem has been exacerbated. And so like I said, with uh, providing the law in the bag, getting the information mm -hmm. to their doorsteps, uh, we're hopefully helping people at least initially until we get open. And there are other resources mm -hmm. out there, but it's difficult sometimes uh, for people to access. Yeah, and I know what, what are some of the other things that you guys need to um, get the legal and justice clinic uh, rolling the way you want it to roll? Uh, thank you, that's, um, we need volunteers, we need financial resources, of course, and locations for community forums. So on the volunteer level, I uh, just want to put a little pitch out there because schools are opening and on one level or another. And if there's um, college students or law school students, uh, we, can, we can use you. And it's an incredible opportunity to help people as well as be mentored by um, uh, some people with experience in these areas. Uh, so we need volunteers uh, that would be greeters and um, also intake information from uh, the community. Um, uh, that come and need, need our assistance. Uh, that would include uh, filling out paperwork and interviews, and also uh, uh, people who um, have a strong background in Spanish and uh, to help interpret and make sure that the yeah. community is very clear. And you need funding so Magdalena can count some of the money. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> we want to keep Magdalena very busy. So I just want to say up front that we want to be very good stewards. Our, our, um, we're very intentional. We want to be very good stewards of what um, uh, funding we do receive. And it could be a one-time gift. It could be um, a periodic gift or a monthly gift. And we would very much appreciate that. Um, uh, also in-kind gifts. So computers and yeah. printers. Uh, as well. So if you were reaching out to the public like you are now, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? say to them about what your needs will be. You're speaking to one person that you love and you need their help. Well, I'm, Karen, what do you say? I think we really need some volunteers to give us, give us their time to help out and um, get trained so that when people come in, they're ready to give, give assistance. So I would add also, I spoke to a professional developer and she said, Karen, uh, just remember that actually giving and service really triggers a chemical, positive chemical reaction in the body. And once you people, uh, people are on board, 
there, it's a good feeling to give. It's a good feeling to serve, uh, to serve others. That's why we're here, to give and to serve others. And so uh, they would look forward to, uh, once they come on board, it would be exciting. It would be satisfying to know that they're actually serving people that are underserved. So that's really the plug that I would put in. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to work. You've got God behind you. You're helping others get what they need out of life. It's uh, people are giving to you, and you're giving back, and you have a horseshoe on the wall behind you. <laughs> right? They'll look now, Carol. <laughs> it looks like a horseshoe. No, it looks like, <laughs> thank you not, for all the not. services that you guys are providing. Tell Dad we said hello, because um, Sharon, you said Dad was the glue that uh, helped put this together. Uh, helped put together. Yeah. yeah. What's Dad's name? Philip Capra. There you go. We want to shout anybody else out before we go? I'm sorry. I just want to both say to my community, my Spanish community, I just le quiero decir un mensaje de español. Necesitamos dar nuestro tiempo. Necesitamos servir a otros. La Biblia nos manda y dice que yeah. es dar que recibir. Así que necesitamos voluntarios y necesitamos donaciones y pueden meterse a nuestra página de internet, llenar un formulario que está debajo del link de donaciones y vamos a hacer el trabajo juntos, vamos a ser parte de este precioso puente que une a estas personas necesitadas con el servicio que ellos realmente eh, eh, necesitan, con el servicio que ellos están buscando. Muchas gracias. Hey, muchas gracias. There you go. All right, great. Website yet? Social media? Uh, website is in uh, under construction and development. It will be thoroughly um, up very soon. Uh, we have some preliminaries, um, but we can be reached uh, info at rocklegal.org. And certainly you can send us an email. You can send your resume. If you're interested in volunteering, you can also uh, drop something in the mail. Uh, 401 West 205th Street, uh, Rock Legal and Justice Clinic. And we'll have the phone number up and running as well soon. Thank you guys for your service. We need you. Uh, uh, the building bridges between our community and the legal system. Very much needed in this day and time. Great. Kudos to you. And God bless you. And thank you guys for all that you're doing. And good luck with everything. All right. Thank you. Thank God's you. God's with much. it. God bless you. God's with it. It can't, it can't go wrong. Awesome. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Karen McDowell, Executive Director, Magdalena Sosa, Treasurer, Sharon Fletcher, Co-Founder and Vice Chair. Thank you guys so much. It is The Bridge. Talk about it one more time. The Rock Legal and Justice Clinic. Thank you guys so much. We love you. Thank you so much for having Stay us. Stay safe. God bless. God bless All right. We'll take a break. I've got a whole lot more coming up next on Open. decade in the making, created in 1790 to allocate our U.S. population and economy, and every 10 years check-in determining our community residents and needs, Women Voices Lead Suffrage Centennial acknowledges another year of elections, while Women in the Heights artists celebrate their 10 years anniversary through Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance guidance to ensure Uptown is recorded through our census count is how we identify our community needs. Although we are living in a social distancing era, thanks to the worldwide internet, we now have the means to hear the popular voices. So don't be left out. Go to my2020census.gov and make sure to be counted. No, toward the end of the show. Funny how time flies when you're having fun. But unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show. And I want to thank you, our guest, for joining us and you, our viewers, for tuning in and checking it all out. You can follow us at BronxNet TV for continued coverage. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have an attitude of gratitude. Hey, our producer, Helen Greenberg, she's leaving us. She went and got a job uh, 
She's doing bigger and, and better things, but she'll never really, really leave. But we want to wish her all the luck and all the love in her new endeavors. But we have some new producers that came on. Our new producers are Stephen Powell, Yasmin Burgess, and uh, Chelsea Jackson. We want to thank you guys so much for putting together a wonderful show. And Helen, once again, thank you for all that you've done throughout the years right here at the Bronx Net. Always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you and what you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice and let your choice control the chooser. And remember, whether you say you can or you can't, either way you're right. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. I'll catch you another day, another way. In fact, I'll catch you on 107.5 WBLS right after the quiet storm tonight on BLS. Peace.